Hi everybody, I am Chris Helms. I'm the collections manager here at the Adler Planetarium. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the largest and most complex pieces in the Adler's historic artifact collection, the Atwood Sphere. Now this piece occupies an interesting place in our collection in that it is both an artifact that needs to be cared for, just like any of our other artifacts, but it also a ride that visitors can take part in. Thousands of visitors use it every year. So how do we balance the two? Let's find out. Originally built in 1913 by the Chicago Academy of Sciences, the Atwood Sphere is the oldest operating sky simulator in the world. There's actually one other one in St. Petersburg, Russia that's older, but it no longer operates. To simulate the sky, you actually go inside of the sphere where it's darker and the whole thing rotates around you. The Atwood was constructed with 692 individual star holes drilled into it. They're nearly impossible to see from the outside unless you're looking really closely, but they show up perfectly when you're inside the dark sphere. The star holes represent the sky that you can see at 42 degrees north latitude, which is roughly the latitude of Chicago. The Atwood was donated to the Adler in the early 1990s, and it has lived here ever since. In fact, the room it is currently sitting in was basically constructed around the sphere for this piece specifically. The Atwood is, by its very nature, a historic piece, both in terms of the history of the sphere, but also in terms of Chicago history. And so we have an obligation to care for it in much the same way we would any other historic artifact in the Adler's collection, whether it's a sundial or an astrolabe or something similar. We have to balance those conservation needs with the ability for visitors to use it year round. It's a very difficult balancing act that we have to get right. In 2019, we actually needed to do a lot of conservation work on the sphere. It's constructed much the same way as a normal globe is. There are two steel hemispheres that are joined at the center, and each hemisphere consists of a number of different steel sections. The seams between those steel sections actually start to separate over time, just from use or changes in temperature and humidity. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to make new steel bands to go across the seams to hold it all together. As you can imagine, that's pretty difficult. The sphere is obviously curved, so each of those steel bands needs to be specially constructed with special dimensions. To do that, we worked with a local company here in Chicago that works extensively with museums to specially construct them. We also had to repaint the inside of the sphere. Over the years, the paint fades, and we needed to repaint it in order to maintain the dark interior. The last time the Adler actually repainted the inside of the Atwood sphere was about 1998, so it was long overdue. The problem is, if you repaint the inside of the sphere, you run the risk of accidentally filling in all of the 692 star holes. So what did we do? Well, the most effective way we found to prevent that from happening is to actually fill each of the 692 star holes with toothpicks, believe it or not. Luckily, they are more or less exactly the right size, and as you can imagine, this is extremely time consuming, but since the main attraction of the Atwood is being able to see the star holes inside the Atwood as it rotates, it's extremely important. Then, once the interior was repainted, we had to repaint the constellation lines with special UV paint. The whole process took a couple of months, so as you can imagine, it's actually very time consuming. And the new coats of paint on the inside actually added about 45 pounds to the overall weight of the Atwood sphere. But let's go inside and take a look at the conservation work. So earlier, when I said the Atwood sphere was the oldest operating sky simulator in the entire world, that wasn't just hyperbole, I meant it. Every year, thousands of visitors are brought up into the Atwood Sphere to experience in pretty much the exact same way that it was 100 years ago. Obviously, some things have changed. We've updated the electrical system, added gondolas, things like that. But by and large, the experience is exactly the same as it was. So why don't I take you up in here and give you a little bit of a tour? Here we are inside the Atwood Sphere. You'll notice the change in audio, and that's because the sphere functions as a large echo chamber once you're inside of it. It's also really dark, so a lot of this might not show up on video. Uh, but if I turn my flashlight on, you can see a lot of the ultraviolet lines that our restoration staff has you have used to repaint the constellations. If you look really closely, you'll also notice that a lot of the individual star holes have been numbered, and that's just so we can find them easier as a reference if we have to do any additional conservation or restoration work in the future. I'll turn the light off here, and I'll actually flip on the Atwood sphere, and you can watch it rotate, although very slowly. The entire rotation takes a few minutes, and again, it simulates the sky at roughly 42 degrees north latitude, which is where Chicago is. We are extremely proud of the work that our collections, conservation, and exhibition staff have put into getting this experience back up to a wonderful level for future generations. And we really hope that uh, we can see everybody here to experience it sometime in the near future. So thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next time.